Hi, my name is Karthik from Design School by WPAlgorithm.com. In this tutorial, I want to explain Elementor CSS Grid container in detail. So, by the end of this tutorial, you'll understand how to create grids, how changing rows, columns, and how changing the flow of the grid affects these elements in two dimensions. So, we'll be building using two simple examples. One example is a basic one where we'll use a grid and we'll arrange these boxes and see how they are affected when we arrange them in different columns and rows and in the second example we'll build a single post template using nothing but CSS grid container so if you're ready let's get into the tutorial the first thing you have to do is to enable CSS grid container so go to your WordPress dashboard click on Elementor click on settings and click on features scroll all the way down click and choose grid container and turn it to active once you pick that click on save changes and if you have a caching plugin purge all the cache this will make sure you are good to go and now just create a new page post or a template using finder you can hold on command e or ctrl e on windows and just type add you can create a new page template or whatever you need just click on that and that will take you to a Elementor interface where you can start understanding grid. So let's click on the plus button. We'll pick grid. We'll pick the first layout. You can always change this later, but we'll discuss that in a bit. So in order to create the colorful grids, I'll just click on the plus button, click and drag the heading widget. Now I'll just call it grid item one. And you can drag another heading widget and notice when you try to drag another heading widget it puts it in horizontal direction next to it so we'll just call this grid item 2 i'll click on this heading widget i'll click on advanced give it a padding of 50 pixels and let's also give this heading widget a background i'll click here click here and give it a background Let's change the color of the heading widget. That should be fine. We'll do the same with this heading widget. We'll go to padding. We'll give 50 pixels. We'll click on background. Give it this color. We'll also change the color of this text. This looks better. So whatever. I'll quickly duplicate the grids until we have like six grid items. I can actually use navigator for that. I can click and hold command or control, right click, duplicate. Let's do that again. Right click, duplicate. Let's rename this. Let's call this grid item three. Let's call this four and six. Let's also give different backgrounds for each of them. Okay, now we have six grid items with different backgrounds and also we have text to identify each one of them. And notice how each of these item behaves as we change the options in the grid container. So I'll just click on the container again. The first one is pretty straightforward. It basically allows you to change the content width. So depending on the content width, the grid items are stretched or squished. But anyway, let's leave it at the default. We're not really worried about the content width. It's basically the width of the grid as a whole. The same thing with height. Anyway, the items are stretched to fit the whole grid. So minimum height really doesn't matter. Container layout is set as grid. You can hide or show this dotted border for each grid item. Let's leave it at the default. And now let's discuss about columns, rows. Gaps are basically the spaces between columns and rows. And what are columns? Columns are the vertical spaces. So the first ver vertical space is this which has grid item 1, 3 and 5. The second vertical space or column has grid item 2, 4 and 5. And what are rows? Rows are the horizontal spaces. So the first row has grid item 1 and 2. The second row has grid item 3 and 4. And third row has 5 and 6. Alright. So columns again are vertical spaces. And rows are horizontal spaces. And each individual element is called an item and we called it grid item all right by default it created two columns 
when you say 2 it's creating two columns and by default it created row one row all right and what about this auto flow now auto flow means whenever you're creating or adding a new element into the grid let's say i'm just dragging this what what happens to the grid so let's say i'm just pulling it anywhere if i pull it right after grid item 1 it just pushes grid item 2 and puts the new item in here now by default grid item 2 is there in the first row so the flow of the element is set as row that means whenever you are adding new content it puts the element in a new row it aligns the element into a row rather than column so it tries to put this element horizontally if I drag the heading widget here it pushes item 4 and it puts this new heading widget into the second row I'll just click and drag this and put this after item 6 and see it just puts item 6 back and it's now placed in the fourth row but in our grid we just said one row and now we have four rows right how is that possible it's automatically creating the rows required because we set the flow as row so whenever the browser thinks all the rows are filled it creates a new row and puts the elements into the rows that's what auto flow means the same thing with column now i'll delete this heading widget first i'll click on the grid container again let's change the flow notice we have one and two here three and four in the second row five and six in the second third row all right now let's change the flow of the container from row to column and see how the items are placed you can notice that the items are not being properly displayed or they're getting squished that's because we changed the flow to column and the number of columns we set as two but here we have six grid items and the browser is trying its best to put all the items into new columns and adjust them accordingly so let's increase the number of columns and see if that helps that really doesn't help let's change it to four now kind of okay since we have six grid items let's change the number of columns to six and there you have it each item is placed in one column each since we just have six columns it just puts every item into the column right now let's change the number of rows here let's say two rows and see what happens so six columns and two rows in total you have 12 boxes but see the flow of the items it puts grid item 1 in the first column in the first column it also puts grid item 2 then it comes to the second column puts item 3 and 4 then it comes to third column puts item 5 and 6 that is when it has available items so when it doesn't have the available number of rows or columns it automatically creates them let's change this back to 1 and it creates the number of columns required to fit these items necessary now if we say three rows see how that happens so its priority is to fill the items in columns since we just have three spaces vertically it puts all the items first vertically then it goes to the second column and puts all the spaces and the third column fourth column fifth column and sixth column are empty now when you try to drag in another heading widget maybe you try to drag it after this it just puts in the next available column see that so it puts that in the third column now let's change the auto flow to row now we have six columns and three rows total 18 spaces so it puts all the elements horizontally first or in rows first before putting the new item into a new row now if I try to push this again it puts this into a new row like this to see all the available boxes let's add another heading widget even if I try to put it down below this grid item 6 it's not allowing me to do that you can either put it onto the left or right of any grid item because the flow is again set as row see that it fills it's now filling the second row based on the elements dragged so I'll just drag it here 
there you have it i'll click and drag this here and there you have it so since it filled the first row available it's now trying to fill the second row so you understand the concept right it first looks at the number of rows or columns and if the auto flow is set as rows it will try to fill all the rows possible before putting the items into the next row or creating new rows and putting them so let's say since there are six items let's say we just have one row again nothing really changes let's say we also change the number of columns to three and we just say number of columns number of rows as one now we totally have three boxes it fills the first items like so then we don't really have second row it creates that and fills the item in the second row it does the same with the third row right but if you explicitly create that the number of rows and the number of columns it will change depending on the number of rows and columns available but again its priority is the flow so whatever the flow is it will fill those elements or those spaces first before moving on to next spaces all right so that is how the columns and rows behave and what about the units fr stands for fraction when you're saying 4 fr it's basically dividing the available space into four equal parts and each item as you can see is of the same size as in here you can click this and click the pencil icon to give your own custom units so let's change the number of columns so since we have three columns as of now let's say 1 fr 2 fr and 1 fr see that so the second column is basically twice as big as first and third columns so each of the column unit should be separated by space you can also use other units such as 100 pixels something like that maybe 300 pixels or 400 pixels you can use any of them but fr is better the second one is twice as big as the first one and the third column is thrice as wide as the first one so that's how the columns are created similarly with rows you can do the same so you can say 1 fr for the first row 2 fr for the second row 1 fr for the third row or you can say 2 fr for the first row again you have to separate all of them with spaces 1 fr so the first row has a height twice as much as the second and third rows so that's what it's doing but if you want to really keep things simple just pick fr from here and whatever number you give here that basically creates the number of columns whatever the number you give here that give creates the number of rows and depending on the flow it puts the elements let's try to drag in a button widget if i try to drag this here or here it puts that in that let's add another button or let's add another image see that it's putting all the elements or it's pushing or arranging the elements into columns or vertical spaces when the flow is vertical and it does the same when the flow is row it does that in the horizontal direction see so that's how the css grid works so let's move on to a more advanced example or use case where we'll create single post design hold on command or control e that opens up finder just type theme builder or just type theme you get this click on theme builder that will take you to the theme builder interface click on single post we're going to create a new single post design and understand how awesome it is to use elementor css grid container so we'll just click on add new make sure you selected single post and click on add new and this is the design that will be applied whenever you create a new post on your wordpress website so as we try to create a new single post design elementor gives us these pre-made templates let's pick one of them you can also speed it up by using or you can also create everything from the scratch but again i just chose the pre-made template and i'll show you how easy it is to convert to a grid container or design a grid container so this is the post and i don't like the post that it's previewing so you can change that for any theme builder template click on the settings cog click on preview settings and let's actually change it to a post 
that can dis properly display data. Maybe this one has a feature image. We just need a post that has every required data to preview it. So yeah, this one has a featured image. So this is the built-in design. Now let's apply our grid container knowledge. Scro scroll all the way down and click on the plus button. Let's click a grid. Let's pick the basic grid. Now, what do we really need? So I'll not actually drag and drop every single widget. We can simply copy and paste the widgets. So I'll click on the structure. Click on this to expand everything we need. So hold down command or control and keep clicking on every widget you need. So all of them should be something like that. You right click on it. Click on copy. Scroll all the way down. Now under your brand new container, right click on it and just click on paste. So that pastes all the brand new widgets into our container or our brand new grid container. Now it might be a bit messed up. So this is our grid container. I'll click on this and now we need to understand how we can make this our own or how we can make this just like this one but with grids. I'll click on this and the auto flow is set to row and the columns are set to two and the rows are set to one. So it's basically filling all the available elements into columns or sorry into rows right. So it's filling these two into the first row then it's coming to the second row and filling them but for our design we want everything to be stacked on one another and that can be achieved just by using or changing the column to one. So we just have one column so it puts everything into rows. You can also click this container to see the dotted borders for each of the widgets. You can see the first element is put into the first row. The second element is put into the second row. If we increase the number of columns, it increases the number of boxes in the row. So it will put the elements like so before putting the other elements into other rows. So we just want everything to be stacked on one another. So the trick here is to just use one column and make sure the auto flow is set to row. It might be a bit confusing, but just pick one column and one row and that will basically stack up all your widgets. Now you can simply delete this again, click on navigator. You can delete this container or the post content. Click command click command click. I'll right click and I'll just delete these two items. Now this is our single post design just achieved with grid container. How awesome it is. So with just one container and few widgets, you can get a single post design. Now you can publish this, click on add condition, set it to posts and click on save and close. So just like that, we created a single post design. Hopefully you understood that. And you can also change the rows width from here. You can click the pencil icon, give each row, but it would look odd. So just stick with the basic units that should just be fine because you never know how these elements or how wide or how tall these elements should be in a row. So just leave it at one and leave this at one and make sure the default units of FR are selected. Thank you so much for watching and hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. And if you want to learn more about CSS Grid or Elementor in general, head over to Elementor Basics playlist on the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.